So today we are diving into what are epics, feature, user story tasks and bugs and what are the main differences between them. You will learn when to use each one of them and how they interrelate between them. I'll walk you through concrete examples to illustrate the concepts. And make sure to stay until the end of the video where I will share with you some bonus tips on best practices how I use epics, feature, user story, tasks and bugs on my projects. Let's get started. So why is this important? So look, understanding the difference between epics, feature, user story, tasks, bugs in Azure DevOps is essential for organizing your whole work, right? So it will help you optimize your resource allocation, your timelines, your project plan, and so forth. And it improves collaboration and tracking of each of the project deliverables throughout the project lifecycle. So let's quickly define each one of those work item types in Azure DevOps. So work item type is effectively an epic, a feature, a user story, a task, a bug, and each one of these serve a specific purpose in your project lifecycle. So let's start with user stories. So user stories are short description of functionality as viewed from an end user perspective. They are typically delivered within a sprint. Then you have your features. So feature are used to logically group user stories into features of a product. They usually fit within a release. Then you have your epics, which are your large items that can be used to group related features. They usually span across multiple sprints and multiple teams. Then what you also have is task. So tasks are the specific actions required to complete a user story. So they are often used to describe technical activities, detailing what needs to be done by who. And then you have your bugs which are work items that tracks defects found during testing or after the software is deployed. So let me share with you a practical example of how that would look like in Azure DevOps. So I have a project with effectively some work item types. So if I go to my board and I go to the backlog, you will effectively see a backlog of items, right? So for example, those are all my epics. But if I then open one of the epic, I can see my features and you can see how they are organized my epics on top, my feature below. And then if I go to the feature case management, I have my user stories. And then if I open one of the user story here, I can see that for that user story, we have a task specifically in a specific state that can be assigned to someone. And then we have also a related bug assigned to that task. So concretely here in this example, I have organized this product backlog in epics, features, and user stories. So the epics represent kind of the big stages of my system that I'm implementing. So in this case, I'm implementing an inquiry management system for students. So the first stage is we the student self-service. If I look at that feature is we have a student portal and maybe we have some virtual agents or chatbots available as well as another feature. And the student's portal needs to allow student portal login, user password reset, creation of an inquiry and so forth. If you look maybe at the inquiry submission and communication, we have queue management, omni-channel emails and so forth. Inquiry management, which then has my case management, which has, you know, all the cases, case statuses, case assignment, case reference and so forth. And then for each of these, then you can kind of decompose it to specific tasks that for case reference number, I need to do something specific. A developer needs to do something specific, configuration, development, and so forth. And then once or you start having bugs, you can then create those specific bugs under the specific user stories. And something else to be mindful in Azure DevOps, the work item types that you get with your project, so meaning epics, feature, user story, and so forth, is related to the process you choose when you start a new project. So let me show you. So when you start a new project, effectively you can pick from four different processes. And you can see here on the, on the screen, the work item process. So you have your basic, agile, scrum, and CMMI. And then effectively those four processes have specific work item types. So the basic one, as you can see, has epic issues task. And then if you pick agile, that's a bit of a different one when you have your epics feature user story task bug uh, and, and bugs can have tasks as well. Uh, very similar scrum. 
structure is pretty similar. It's just that there is a difference between user story and product backlog item. So the terminal is slightly different. And then you have your CMMI, which again, very similar to Agile and Scrum, instead of calling, uh, so user story are called requirements instead of, um, you know, product backlog item in Scrum, for example. So except for the basic, the last three are pretty similar in how they organize their work item types. And as promised, a bit of a bonus at the end, of some of the best practices when using, you know, Epic's feature user stories and so forth. So the first one is make sure to have some clear definition at the beginning of your project of what those work item types are, right? And share it with your clients or with your stakeholders. Make sure they, you are aligned. What is an Epic? What is a feature? What is a user story? Use examples to illustrate, you know, the concept. So some of the examples I shared with you can read reuse those examples or if you have another type of project you can kind of use the example of your project but make sure that some definition are defined at the beginning so that you can easily create those work item types throughout your project the second is really related to agile principle right so often review your product backlog and those items there is even a term called product backlog um, grooming so backlog grooming in agile where once every two weeks or once a week, we go through the product backlog and we review the items. We review the user story, we review the features, the epics, we split some of them, we group some others, we relate some user story, we elaborate on the user story. So that's your product backlog and that hierarchy of items, it's a living document throughout your project, right? So it's not something that you set at the beginning and never change. You set the beginning to get you started, but then you refine it as your project evolves. Another one is use priority, right? So prioritize your work item tasks, whether that's user stories, features, epics, make sure to put some priorities or work with the business or someone that can put those priorities on those items so that you can kind of help you plan the delivery of those priority one, let's say, user story early on in your project. And the final one is adapt the structure to your project. So I shared with you, you know, epics, feature, user story, task, and bugs, but don't hesitate to not use some of these, right? For example, I don't use task very often in my project, only when the, de the development team is used to use task, they want to classify their work using task, then we would use it. Otherwise, I simply don't. I sometimes don't use epics on my smaller project. We only have features and user stories. On bigger project, I might even have an, another item on top of the epic. So you can effectively tweak the structure of your product backlog in Azure DevOps. I actually have additional videos in my library. So don't hesitate to look at my channel. You will find additional videos, how to uh, customize the process, add additional work item types. So on larger project, I might have an item on top of an epic called a collection or a team or a business capability. It doesn't matter the name, right? But it's kind of a grouping of epics. Um, so again, don't stick to what is provided by default. Use it if that fits. But if you need to make changes, DevOps is fairly um, easily configurable and adapted to make it easy for your team again to communicate, collaborate, and deliver some great project to your clients. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more about Azure DevOps, more about concepts in the Microsoft business application space. So see you in the next one.